So now that we've built, again, a catalog of forces and we identify um, forces in a situation, we, we can kind of go to the next level as we're working towards quantification and ask ourselves the question, um, what do forces do? And this seems like a really stupid question for us to be asking so much later, and we didn't start with that, but we're going to get into that a little bit here, and then I'm going to do a demonstration in class that will also um, back up what we're talking about. Because right now, um, your guys' definition of what forces do is just any time that makes you Anytime that somebody makes you do something that you don't want to do, uh, you simply just call them a force. And of course, that is not correct. So I'm going to do a demonstration in class for you. And I'm going to put a cart on a very low friction um, surface, uh, as we have used before um, for um, the speeding up, slowing down lab and, and uh, understanding the graphing of motion. And then I'm going to attach a string and I'm going to tie that string to a series of masses hanging from that string that's attached through via a pulley. And that pulley is going to cause this um, to have a uh, gravitational force or the weight pull it down. And through that little um, string, it's going to cause the cart to go that way. And the question is, is what does it do? And as I manipulate stuff, if I were to graph the motion, graph the position versus time, the velocity versus time, the acceleration versus time graphs, um, what is physically going on in that situation? And then how does that change as I maybe add some extra mass to this cart? Or how does it change as I add extra mass to this hanging mass? So those couple questions we're going to um, answer during class but I'm also gonna talk about them a little bit right now. So I actually have a series of, of graphs here that I made during class, and the timelines all kind of uh, match up, um, and we're only interested really in the first two seconds. You can see that there's these big chunks at two seconds um, for that for the last cart, or for the uh, that blue cart, um, because that's where I had to stop it before it went off the table. But we can see that for the most part, all of the graphs follow this general um, shape where we have this exponential curve. And as we saw in the last unit, that exponential curve relates to non-uniform motion. And if we were to quick take a look down at the last graph, the acceleration versus time graph, we do in fact see that we get this um, constant positive acceleration. Um, and of course, as we examine the graphs in the middle, we see a linear velocity versus time graph indicating, again, that we have constant acceleration. Now, the different lines on this graph, as we'll see when I recreate the demonstration in class, correspond to different uh, setups. So, for example, the um, red line, which is right in the middle, there's 500 grams of mass sitting on the pulley that's causing it to accelerate. And we'll kind of use that as our baseline. So we, we have this hanging mass and it causes the car to accelerate. Awesome. Now, what happens when I change and I put a thousand grams of mass onto the cart? Well, this blue line, I, it indicates a steeper slope than the red line does. And if we look back down at the bottom, uh, acceleration versus time graph, which is outlined in red, um, we can see the blue line has a greater positive acceleration. So therefore, I can conclude that a larger force acting on an object, in this case, the weight force, which we'll obviously talk about later, we'll actually do a whole lab on this, a greater force causes a greater acceleration. And then the last situation I have is I'm going to put, go back to my original 500 grams, but I'm going to triple the mass of the cart. So uh, I'm going back to having the same force as the original, original situation, but now um, the, the mass that it's trying to pull is three times as large. And we see um, on the middle graph, and on the bottom graph that we got this much gentler slope indicating a lower acceleration. So 
we know that a larger force causes larger acceleration, and we know that a greater mass causes less acceleration. So we're going to take a look at a formula that relates all these concepts together. So to give a quick recap, we know that an object that is pulled with a constant force moves with constant acceleration. But then we said, all right, well, how do we affect these things? And uh, we decided that, or we found experimentally that acceleration is directly proportional to force. So if I increase the force, I will also increase the acceleration. We found that by hanging a greater mass. And then we also found that acceleration is inversely proportional to an object's mass. So if I increase the mass of an object, I will decrease the acceleration. And these things, they make, they make sense. If I'm pushing something that's heavier, it's harder for me to push it. So I need to, if I want to get a, the same acceleration, I need to increase my force. And we'll take a look at these, these three concepts, acceleration, force, and mass, and we'll relate them all together in a very simple formula that you've probably seen before in the next segment.